We're going to take a closer look at the Shuey two-term approximation. And just as a review, we noted that um, there are some classes of AVO anomalies. This uh, anomaly here is a reflection from the top of a gas sand, and it, it starts off negative, but it gets increasingly negative as the offset increases, and that's, that's kind of the key idea in looking at uh, amplitude variations with offset. Um, we also noted that the P wave velocity does decrease, but the shear wave velocity increases uh, uh, due to uh, an increase in the shear rigidity and a, and a decrease that we see here in the, in the density. <clears throat> the um, benefit of this is that we showed the last time around is if we were looking at range limited stacks, if we were just looking at stacks of the far offset traces or stacks of the near offset traces as opposed to the full stack, we might see different amplitude features and they could be diagnostic, uh, you know, as we showed in this particular example of a, um, of a fluid contact in this case. Now, the Shuey two-term approximation is, is fairly easy to um, uh, calculate, and it, it depicts the oh, class 2 and class 3 AVO anomalies very, very nicely. Uh, so it does a good job of um, uh, providing insights into what we might expect to see uh, in these, these different uh, uh, oil and gas scenarios here. You remember these, these different calculations here come from uh, Domenico's uh, calculations and velocities and densities and water saturations at uh, different depths, 2,000, 6,000, 10,000 feet for gas and uh, oil. <clears throat> so the Shuey two-term approximation has this term here, which has the uh, densities and, and velocities, the impedances. And then it has a term which um, relies primarily on the, almost entirely, on the Poisson's ratios of the shale, shale, which would be sigma 1, and the sand, which would be sigma 2. So these, are, these again, are the calculations. And remember that Domenico's, De Domenico's velocities and uh, uh, densities were water saturation specific. So, um, what we're showing here are values at these different depths for uh, a reservoir, a sand reservoir containing gas or oil at 2,000, 6,000, and 10,000 feet, varying with incidence angle, in this case all the way out to 90 degrees, and you can see that they converge uh, near 90 degrees. The, um, <clears throat> the, var the variations that we see here at, uh, at the left, actually, uh, have a sigma 2 for the sand of 0.1 and a sigma 1 of 0.4 uh, in, uh, in this second term here. Um, so I just have to point out that, you know, I've been a little bit lazy. I've just kind of retained the uh, values of the velocity and the density calculated for this water saturation and for these, um, for gas and oil at these uh, different depths, 2,000, 6,000, 10,000 feet. So there's a mixture of um, Poisson's ratios in here. But this is primarily intended just to, to give you kind of the general idea. And we want to compare these values of sigma, uh, the, the values that are used up here, 0 0.1 and 0 0.4. We're going to take a look at Ostrander's paper and, and uh, show how they uh, compare. Again, the values of V1 and V2 uh, incorporate the depth dependent uh, variations of sigma that we talked about before. This is a good general reference here, Hilterman's um, short course notes, uh, Hilterman 2001, it's a distinguished instructor series number four. So here what I've done is um, we have, uh, uh, we've changed the um, Poisson ratio in this uh, second term here so that um, we have 0.4 and 0.1 over here for the second term, and over here we have 0.3 and 0.19 uh, for the second term. And um, 
So we're seeing what the influence of kind of narrowing the gap, narrowing the difference between the Poisson's ratios and the shale and the sand will have on the offset response. And you can see that it's a fairly dramatic one here where we have a, a very significant drop. Um, we continue to have a, a significant uh, drop, but much less of a drop for the oil sand at 2,000 feet. And, uh, and we see, but we see this drop diminish. And as we get into the deeper gas sand, uh, 10,000 feet and 6,000 feet and uh, 2,000 feet, we see almost we see almost a reversal in the predicted amplitude a variation with offset for this range of Poisson's ratios. So the Poisson ratio influence is um, is fairly fairly significant and. Uh, while these uh, zero offset values here don't change, and we wouldn't, wouldn't expect them to change because the zero offset values uh, sine square root of uh, theta equals zero is going to be zero. Uh, so that doesn't change, but we see uh, this significant variation with uh, offset here. That's kind of the primary point to make. And we are going to compare the calculations that we've been making with the two-term Shuey approximation to Ostrander's calculations, just, just using Ostrander as kind of a benchmark. And uh, he does something which is interesting. I've you know, never, never done this before, but he uses a constant ratio, velocity ratio and density ratio, 1.25, 1.11, 0, 0 0.9, and 0 0.8 to generate these different uh, R of theta uh, plots. So you can take this uh, normal incidence uh, term, the uh, difference in impedance over the sum of the impedances, and express that as a product of the ratios. And since the ratios are constant, this would be 1.25 squared minus 1 over 1 plus 1.25 squared. And, uh, so we're seeing what kinds of amplitude variations we get with uh, offset here. Again, we're looking at the traces in a common midpoint gather, which vary from um, you know near zero offset to some maximum offset. And uh, we've got class one, a positive reflection coefficient decreasing. Class two, starting off near zero and decreasing into the negative, and then your class three. Uh, anomalies that we see here with a negative reflection coefficient becoming increasingly negative. And um, so this would be the result of Shuey's approximation here. We've got uh, also two uh, classes of two different sets of curves uh, generated with different values for the Poisson's ratio in the shale and the Poisson's ratio in the sand. 0.4 and 0.1, as we note, noted before, and 0.3 and 0.1. And you can see the 0.3 and 0.1 lines kind of fan out from 45 degrees towards uh, uh, zero, whereas the uh, larger difference in Poisson ratio, we get this significant drop uh, at uh, uh, for all classes, for all zero offset reflections. Uh, so th this would be the set of curves that we'd be comparing with uh, Ostrander. And you can see where, well, over here we've got for uh, the 0.4 and 0.1 value at uh, 2,000 feet, uh, we've, or excuse me, the 0.4 and 0.1 value with these uh, velocity and density ratios, we, we actually have the 1.25 um, value for the 0.4 and 0.1 coming in above the uh, value for this ratio, 1.25, uh, with, with Poisson's ratios of 0.3 and 0.1. So, so distinctly different result here using Shuey's uh, two-term approximation than we get here with uh, Ostrander, that we see in Ostrander's uh, 84 paper. And we see similarity here at the the deeper uh, uh, differences, but you know we 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 can see some additional variations or deviations from the uh, you know in, in other words this 
this uh, dashed line here crosses over this uh, reflection with a normal incidence of value of 0.1, but it does not uh, down here. Maybe we don't quite carry it far enough, but it crosses over at a much uh, smaller angle uh, than we see over here. It looks like it might cross over around 45 degrees or so. So, so there are definite differences in the two-term Shuey approximation and what um, Osterander uh, puts together for us. And so, um, uh, the next time we're we're going to um, um, talk about the three-term approximation, kind of compare that to uh, Ostrander and see if we can do a little bit better job. Uh, so we'll take a... Uh, we'll also, uh, uh, probably in a later video, we'll take a look at the Aki-Richards linearization and also the Bortfield approximation. But uh, So we're going to take a look at this three-term approximation the next time. And uh, thanks for joining us. See you then.